Stage with Robert Emery. Good afternoon, Fred and Richard from Right Said Fred. Welcome to Backstage with Robert Emery. How hello, are you? hello, hello. Yeah, I'm very good. Thank you very much. Very, very good. It's it's nice to speak to some some rock and rollers, which I don't get to do very often from my, from my line of work. So, okay. um, thank you for coming on board. So, look, I just want to give a, a quick summary. I mean, I'm sure everybody knows you who is going to be watching this, but nevertheless, you were formed in 1989 uh, yes, when yeah. I was about that tall. All right, all um, right, all right. All right. <laughs> wow, um, wow. Yeah, you, you've had number one hits in 70 countries, including. Yes two US number ones, three yep. UK number ones, and even a number one in Japan. You were the yep. first band to reach number one uh, in the USA since the Beatles. And you've played oh, in front of people. With the debut record, yeah. Yeah, with the debut record. And you've played with in front of people like the Queen and Nelson Mandela. You've had yep. global record sales totaling about 30 million, 30 million units and over 100 million plays on Spotify. And mm -hmm. uh, you've been placed in over 50 films and 100 uh, commercials, but like strangely that, yeah. enough, it all started in a basement in Acton, which I know very well. So yeah. why, why, why? I don't know your basement very well, but I know Acton very well. So <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's time now. yet. Uh, steady now. There's time <laughs> yet. Jess. So why don't you tell me a little bit about your time in Acton and 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 how you how you became to be right, Sir Fred? Okay, um, the. The story from Acton is that we were we, we, we've been used to being in bands. We we fancied working with um, a um, someone who does loops and programs music, um, and we were put in touch with a guy called Brian Pugsley. He worked who worked with the Shaman. He worked from this little basement in Acton. We went over there uh, probably in August or September in 1990. Quite warm. It was pretty warm at the time. Yes, <laughs> and it was in the basement. We were getting a bit hot and 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 tired bothered. and bothered, <laughs> and. Um, so we had this track going round. The bass line, it was a song called Heaven, I think. And the bass line actually was the da 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 da, da. It's an E major scale, basically. Yeah. And at one point, Richard got up and started wandering around and then started singing I'm Too Sexy for My Shirt. Yes. I'm Too Sexy for My Shirt, because it was hot. Yes. And at that point, we uh, and he came back and going, oh, I'm too sexy. So singing the bass line with that lyric. And um, Mozart, yes, <laughs> yeah, Chopin, get out of here, yeah, get, yeah. Out of here. Um, so, um, get out of my club. <laughs> so, so, we, so that was the that was the um, you know, the, the the kernel of the idea, yeah. We then, because we were skint, we had to save up to go into other studios and get the song finished and work with other people. Cut long story short, we went around the labels with it, everyone said no. And we then met a, um, we were approached by a young girl called Tamsin, who was a receptionist at a recording studio we used. And she said, I think this is a hit record. Um, if we get it on the radio, uh, can I manage you? So I said, yeah, well, we said, yeah. So thinking she never would. Thinking she never would. And she got it onto Gary Crowley, then onto the Simon Bates show. And after the Simon Bates show in particular, uh, which was a dry, no, which was a morning show on Radio yeah. One, yeah. it just went, bonkers it just people the phones went mad and they had to play it again and suddenly the record just started taking shape it was very very bizarre and then within, within a year it was number one in america yes yeah. yeah and did you have any did you have any expectations did you really have any idea of how large you thought it would be no no no, no none at all we we um none. we'd sort of given up uh, on the idea of generally really yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Life, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'd, we'd kind of given up on the whole record label thing. We were sick to death. We'd been in and out of record deals. We'd been turned down by everybody. We were just kind of bored with them, really. So we, we thought, let's just do this without their, their, without their involvement. And then it took off. And obviously, it, it, um, it caught everybody by surprise. Yeah. 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 And, and did, you, I, I, did you release it as a single or was it part yes. of an album? No. Single, it was a single release. It's the only song okay. the three of us had. Yeah, we had one song. We, we, uh, Rob, who was also in the band, we hadn't... We hadn't been in a band with Rob for more than about 10 minutes. And mm. uh, our first couple of writing sessions, one of them um, um, revolved on Too Sexy being written. And um, so we, we didn't really know Rob. And our record label had never been a record label. Our manager had never been a manager. We had never been a band. And us with Rob <laughs> had actually never been a band. 
So, so it, the, it was chaos. Yeah, so. it, it was an accident waiting to happen, and it was it was absolute chaos. The record company had no idea what they were doing, nor did our manager, nor did us, nor did we. It was complete and utter just uh, let's throw some things at the wall and see what happens. Yeah, exactly. You know, it was. But yeah. I, I guess you started doing a, a lot of TV and a lot of uh, radio promo around yes. it. But you yeah. had nothing else to sell. You had no other album to sell. No, you had no sort of future career lined up. No. You had no idea mm. of where to go. I mean, that sounds no. like a bit of a nightmare because, uh, as you know, you know, in, in uh, at the moment, you know, you would traditionally create your record and then go on tour and and PR yes. your record. And actually, now today's model is about creating your record and and that's supporting your tour rather than the other way around. So, yes. Uh, yes. but back then, you you just had this single and you thought, fuck what. Yes. What do we do with it? Well, everybody thought that. Yes, I mean, what happened? Was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, the single just broke incredibly quickly, particularly uh, into other countries and around Europe. Um, and so everyone was, the, the record label suddenly started sending us songs, saying, this, this is your next single sort of sort of conversation. Yeah. And we said, no, it's not, because we've written the first one, and now we're going to write the second one. Yeah. Um, and uh, so what we did is that uh, we didn't want to re try and rewrite another Andrew Sexy. We thought that was pretty lame. So we wrote Don't Talk, Just Kiss. And we no. thought that was, it was still a dance track, still very pop, but not quite as quirky. And that's the, that's the route we went down. And that proved to be very successful for us, you know, um, much to the record label's surprise. Yeah, yeah. In the, in the, right at the beginning, when we first, the only time I started thinking that I liked the track, I didn't think for a second, as to whether it would be a hit, that didn't cross no. my mind at all. The only time I thought that the track was beginning to, to work as a track was when we, when Phil Spalding, the bass player, put live bass down rather than uh, keyboard bass. Yeah, yeah. Once we put live bass down, the, the track started to hop. It more did, yeah, yeah. And, and was more rhythmically interesting. So that yeah. was the first time I remember thinking, oh no, I quite like this, but we still didn't think it was going to be a hit, not in a million years. No. no. So what, how, how long was it until fr from when you released the single and then it became a hit to yeah. having enough material to be able to to go on tours and actually perform full gigs well we, we were uh, the album was done by um 92 sort of march 92 yeah so we had put a whole album together uh, in that period some of which we had already written with rob after sexy like songs like swan um and deeply dipping already sort of kind of written um then we, we, we and, and we should have gone on tour what happened was is that is that we, we became celebrities which we had we hadn't thought about ever we were like the kardashians <laughs> without, without the, <laughs> all, all the, dumb, all the minus bum. the divorce yes <laughs> minus the divorce yeah so uh, so um yeah, what happened was is that we, we suddenly became this sort of household name. And what the record company realised, and I'm not, it's not a criticism, it's just them re realising it, is that our, our worth on TV was a lot. So we'd go on TV, almost any TV show, and our album sales would spike heavily. You know, literally an extra 40, 50,000 albums. It was very big numbers. Wow. So... We right. got persuaded not to go on the road. Because that would cost money. Because that would cost money and we wouldn't be on TV. Yeah. So the record company mm. kind of persuaded us. I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying long term it was probably the mistake and short term it was the right idea. Um, so we didn't go on the road until after our second album, which didn't go very well. Well, I can remember somebody <laughs> saying, you can't tour on the back of one album. That was our publisher, John Crawley. You can't yeah. tour on the back of one album. That's what we were told. Yeah. Which was really? Just, uh, the, yeah. dumbest, the dumbest advice but, I've heard, you know, ever heard. When you're young, you know, when you start off with a business, you look to people like that for advice, and you take their advice because mm. you assume they know what they're talking about. Yeah. Many, many years later, and, and many bank overdrafts later, that you realise <laughs> they didn't know what they were talking about no. at all. No, it, no. It, yeah. it becomes quite self-serving, and no. you know, I won't tell you the name of the manager or the artist, but a very famous manager of a very famous artist in the UK contacted us and said this. Is gonna, this is gonna fall apart because the people around you do not know what they're doing. So you, I, he said, you don't have to hire me, just take my advice and find people with experience because I can I can tell you now it's gonna fall apart. And did you? We, we did, now he, he was right. We and it's all apart. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and, and he, he was absolutely right. But the trouble is, when things are going so well, your first record is number one everywhere, your second record is top five everywhere, pre-sales for the album and the third single are going mad and, you know, all this stuff. So it's very easy 
from our point of view, they go, well, why would we stop this? Because this is going really well. And yeah. it's only when things start to unravel, you see people's skills and abilities. Yeah. Um, and so he, so he was absolutely right. We should have listened to him, but hindsight's easy, you know. Yeah. No, we're not so, complaining. But you, you, so we, you released that track, though, as, as, as a self-release. You did it on your own record label. Oh, no, no it, it, it was released on a label called Tug, but it wasn't really a record label. It was, it was just a label set up for that, for that one single. Okay. So okay. it wasn't a record company that would already that we got uh, signed by. In fact, but the point really... is that you can cream it in because you're 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 able to take the majority of the the income rather than give a huge proportion to a manager and a huge proportion to a label and a huge proportion to a, a fixer and all the other people. You're able to. Yeah, I'm, I'm you in a strong position when that happens. Yes, yeah, I mean we negotiated a pretty decent record deal on our behalf because also we refused to. I mean we I don't think we thought we were being smart, but we were quite smart at looking back is that we didn't we didn't refuse to sign a record deal we said we'll do a letter of intent okay. you know, we just, we, and that for people who don't know that's if we're to, that's saying we'll act in good faith which in the, in the music industry good faith doesn't stand for much i've got to be honest yeah. um no. and uh, or in life general and um so we it, it did put us in a, in, a, in, a strong, in a strong position because we had we had no record deal and we had this massive one single yeah. So we were in a, quite a strong position, um, and you know, it, it, it's easy to you know to, to criticise looking back. But I think everybody tried their best at the time. It's just if you don't have the skills, trying your best doesn't really matter. You just no. don't have the and, skills. And we didn't really understand the business. No, we didn't. Really. No, no. no we, we, some people do. They they get, they they're duck to water. You know, some people just really understand it from the off. Yeah. And we, and we really didn't. It wasn't until the sort of mid to late nineties, really, yeah. that we began to get a grip on what the business was like and, and how we wanted to work and how we yeah. wanted to spend the rest of our lives. You know. And also, there are things that are really important to us. I know it sounds trivial now, but we, uh, going to the gym is really important to us. Partly because we both have depression, but also we like the the mental and physical thing strength it gives you. So we we would actually turn down promotions, saying no, we've got to go to the gym. Or really? We'd gym, yeah, we would. Or we'd have the gym written into our itinerary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, so yes, instead yes. of M and M's on your on your itinerary, you have your, your uh, gym <laughs> we equipment. Had gym. <laughs> we, had, we had gym. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's it's like smoking. It's it all better for you though, obviously. But it's a moment just for you. It is. Yeah. yeah gym is yeah. just for you. It's yeah. not for anybody else. Because you used to What's own that? a gym, didn't you? Or do you used to run yeah, it or used, something? No, we used to run it. We were managers. Managers. Yeah. 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 But we 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 um. Also, the, the, the we didn't realise, but when we took our shirts off in the video, we didn't realise what a sort of a, a cross to bear a stupid thing to do that, that would be, because <laughs> we just took, uh, the, the, the director said, he said, you guys are in great shape. Take, you, the song says, too sexy for my shirt, take your shirts off. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. And we were in good shape. We, you know, we, we're not being, we're not being a fake modesty. We knew we were in good shape. So, yeah. we, so we did that, but we didn't realise that obviously when you go on, on touring or a, a promotional tour, and suddenly the gym becomes less and less important because you're so busy. Less and less possible. Possible, rather, yeah, possible right, is the right, right word. Um, you stop losing. You start losing sights. And there was a really funny moment. We were <laughs> there was a very famous model in America, a female model called Megan Fox, very famous, and she was a, I think, penthouse playgirl of the year or something like that. And we, Calvin Klein, approached us and her to do this photo shoot. So we turn up at the record company to meet Megan Fox and we've been on the road to uh, promoting. And so we haven't been in the gym. So we walk in <laughs> we, and we weren't fat. We were just a lot smaller. And we, we took our shirts off and you could see people, you could see on their faces, they're like, oh, is that the time? <laughs> <laughs> I think we better reschedule. <laughs> and Mega Fox was very sweet. She didn't. She didn't blink an eye. But no. you could. But the photographer and the uh, the record company kind of went. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. Also the, there was yeah. A, there was a time late, much <laughs> later on when we were touring, and when we started touring it was in Germany, and when we started touring, we obviously had people taking photographs and stuff. And at the beginning of the tour, I would take my shirt off halfway through the show, and it was all it all looked fantastic. Blah blah blah. So I, and, and at the end of it, after each show, the only thing was, that was open after a show was a McDonald's. It was the only place oh, no. to get it. Fast so I was eating McDonald's for about two weeks every night. And I've got pictures of me taking my shirt off at the end of the tour, <laughs> <laughs> looking like Gary Glitter. <laughs> <laughs> 
minus the prison <laughs> sentence, slightly so, larger than life. I, I still thought I was in shape, yeah. uh, but it's been, yeah. it doesn't and, and is exercise still really important for you both? Yes, very. Yeah, yeah crucial. absolutely. Crucial. Yeah, we bought some. Yeah, I've got a Peloton bike there. Oh, I've, we've got a friend who just bought one. And yeah, well, this is the thing. You see, I hate exercise. Right. I, I like the the one thing the one thing in life I really hate is exercise. And right. and f from about the age of naught to about the age of twenty six, I was like this stick thin right. pencil, and I could eat anything, and I wouldn't bulk up, I wouldn't get fat, nothing could happen to me. Um, yeah. and and I. I never ever needed to exercise from from my body, and it, it just genuinely didn't make any difference to what I was eating. Yeah. And then I turned thirty. I know what you're going to say. And, and yeah. literally the day yeah. after I turned thirty, I suddenly thought, oh, what's, what's, what's happening? <laughs> what's happening? What's what's this little bit of blubber around? Yeah. And and then it's it's gradually got worse and worse. And I'm definitely not a fat guy, but no. you know I'm I'm having to watch what I what I eat. Yeah, and I tried to go to the gym and do weights and all that. I, I just, I no. thought, okay, oh, it's so much like hard work. That's the problem. <laughs> if you've never done it in your life, it's a bit of a killer to try and start at the age of thirty-one. It is. It is. I agree. So yeah. I, I thought, well, I try this thing in lockdown. I bought it in the last lockdown, and I love it. And it's, it's, yeah. it's the only I do. It's the only thing that I'm happy to get on for for twenty minutes or half an hour a day and and zone out and go and do do a bike ride. Exactly. Um, yeah. I do the same thing. I've got the little earbud things. And I, sw yeah. I switch on either Sky or not Sky, um, you know, the, the uh, YouTube and watch mm. all the broadcasts, you know, Julie Hartley Brill or whoever it happens to be, Mike Graham. And then, um, and then when I get bored with that, I just uh, turn on the, um, the uh, Spotify app and, and listen to music. But yeah. I agree, zoning out is really, really good. And one of the things about the whole lockdown thing that was never emphasized enough by, by politicians who really ought to know better is the importance of exercise for people. Yeah. The importance of fresh air and exercise and, and sleeping properly. These things are so important. And um, and particularly when it comes to depression and anxiety for people. Yeah. Um, to, to, to encourage people to get out. Even you don't have to be a member of a gym, just get out of your flat and walk around. It's yeah. better to it's better to break the, the guidelines than go completely insane. That was my position. To, no, I, I agree. But talking about depression for a second, yeah. Um, obviously, this is something that affects an awful lot of people. And one of the one of the things I noticed in in the entertainment industry um, is that people who have had success very early on yeah. are very very prone to depression. And I suspect one of the clear reasons why is because they have an eternal fear that they will never be able to um, uh, beat what they have already achieved, and that they. There is this subconscious thing saying, well, the rest of my life is not going to be anywhere near as successful yes. as that little part in time. And that, yeah. that's a hell of a thing to, to have to try and deal with. And yes. I always think, um, you know, people who win Olympic medals um, yeah. and you go, well, that's, you know, that, that is the peak of your physical fitness. That is the peak of your life. You're never yeah. you know, unlikely to ever going to win another Olympic medal, maybe after that that yeah. one pinnacle, yeah. everything from there is slightly downhill. And how, yeah. how do you adjust your mind to make sure you don't fall into that nasty trap of that depression? Think, so how do you deal with it? Well, per personally, I think it depends what you're trying to say when you say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. You know what I mean? I've, got, I've got your yeah. number, mate. You have indeed. Yeah. I, I, You'll come I, round I, with your big buff muscles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it depends how you judge success. If you judge success by numbers and sales, then I think, first of all, that's, I think it's a mistake. Um, and also there's, particularly with the way the market is now, you can't compare sales to 10, even 10 years ago. It's just a different animal completely yeah. now. So I think with, with, with us, we, we, we judge our success by how much we control our own lives. That's success to us. And how we feel about what we're doing. Yeah, and how we feel about what we're doing and the decisions that we get to make as opposed to other people making them for them. Although we used, we used to make a lot more money than we make now, I'm a much happier, more balanced person. Although I have to keep an eye on my depression, I st once, which I do. Which not, is part of this. Yeah, which, which, which uh, is, I, I'm not a manic depressive or anything, but I, I can control it relatively successfully most days. Um, and so for me, that's that success. The success is, um, you know, my wife, my family, um, just health. health, that's success to me. You yeah, know? exactly. If I wouldn't, 
if I was on my own and a bit messed up and but had 20 times as much money, I wouldn't feel more successful. I think also some people measure their success by the amount of um, notice they think they get, whether they're in the papers or yes, whether there's lots yes. of photos, whether they're whether they're, they're mentioned in dispatches and all that. You know, you have to, in a way, you have to be prepared to be happy while you're invisible. Yes. You have to work on that. Yeah. You can't continually expect to make other people happy or to, or to, for your happiness to be derived from other people's approval. That cannot be allowed to happen. Do, um, do, can you tell when each other is, is, is kind of on the edge of going through a little bit of a dip? And is there yes. something that you do to try and pick, pick one of you up? Yes, I think we're quite good at that. I, I yeah. think Fred's more prone to it than me, I think. I am, yes. Because yeah. uh, I'm essentially more simple. He's a bit, <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit and uh, I just run for along, you know. Um, oh, shiny thing, yeah, shiny thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's the sun. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think we do, and I think we um, we we have each other's backs. Yeah. Um, and it, at, in this industry, it's very very easy to get lost, uh, yeah. to get lost in in to lose yourself and to be surrounded by people. One of the things that I've often thought is that if you come from a fairly stable family background with good friends, good family, um, good people around you. When, when you enter show business of one kind or another, um, you are inclined to think that everybody's a bit like your family, that they're mostly okay, that they're, mm. you know, they're straight dealing. And, the, and then you realize after a few years that actually that's not the case at all. It's a, it's a, it's a sharp call and you have to, it is, you yeah, have to yeah. keep your eyes open. Um, yeah. And that's why a lot of people, single, you know, solo artists, travel with friends yeah. or yeah. one or two close people because it, it, it grounds you the whole time. Right. I think I'll artists, I'll, for girls, having yeah. a close girlfriend around, or, or best absolutely. Yeah, yeah. What 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 is the what's the solution for you as brothers when you fall out, when you 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 having to make decisions and you you feel or you've got opposing opinions? How do you how do you keep yourself? Yeah, we don't actually disagree about much. Um, he thinks I'm great, and I don't think he's great. <laughs> so he, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> and that's it, yeah. <laughs> I think I'm great. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Sorry. yeah we, we, don't, we, we do fall out, but it's very, very temp temporary. Yeah. It's because life's too short. And I think, I mean, Rick Richard's ex-partner -part who, who died in 2010, they'd, they'd been together, what, what uh, two, 28, 28 years. 28 years. And, and his partner, Stuart, had been very ill, well, ill for 27 of those years. And um, and, and mum had Alzheimer's and my health has been poor every, over years now and again. So I think sometimes when you've had big stuff in your life, you just it helps you balance it a little bit. And you just think, well, yeah. we're, we're not going to argue about this snare drum sound or this TV show. <laughs> We're just yeah. going to take a chill and go and have a glass of wine and everything will be fine. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. And okay. um, talking about sexuality and sex, there's a definite theme, isn't there, running through your, 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 uh, well, you've got I'm Too Sexy, you've got yes. um, the album called Sex and Travel, you've got the single Sexaholic, you've got Sexy yeah. Bum. Um, yeah. That's true. Is, <laughs> are you sexaholics? Is this uh, just something which you kind of went, well, actually this sex sells, so this is a great, well, this is a great spin on it, or? I mean, but it's a big chunk of people's life, isn't it? I mean, yes, you, yeah. you know, they sell cars with, with, they sell cars via sex and, and perfume and shampoo and everything else. So I suppose, um, yeah, I suppose some, we, we do have, it, it, it does, it does rear its head. Although yeah. sexaholic, well, we didn't write sex. No, we didn't write sexaholic. Um, Unfortunately. Um, but some of it is meant to be sort of fun, like sexy bum and I'm too sexy. Yeah. Um, and other things are like, you know, sex is the common ground is another song we've got. And that is just, a, that's more, a little bit darker, I suppose. Um, I don't know really. I mean, we've, we've, done some, we've done a song about friendship. Yeah, we've, been, we've done quite a few different... About celebrity. Yeah, we've written songs about other stuff. Yeah. So I think it's a bit quite balanced. But I, until you mentioned it, I'd never really thought about it. So Really? Yeah. I'd never Very given, interesting. No, 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 it didn't really... Um, we, try okay. not, we try not to gender stuff. Yeah. So we try not to say he and she too much. Yeah. 
because we're very aware of the fact that two guys might like the song as lovers and two women might like the song as lovers. So yeah. we, the one area of the, of the sexual content, if you like, yes. where we, 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 don't, uh, gen, we try not to gender yeah. too much. Also, he's, he's, he's bisexual, so that makes sense. I like bisex all the time. He bisex all the time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. Um, and That's the worst like, dad I, joke I, I've like, heard all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, try the veal. Try try the veal. Yeah. Um, I tend to write most of the lyrics, so I'm quite conscious that he's singing it. So, uh, although I'm straight, I don't write, you know. Are you? Well, apparently. It says so on my passport. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and um, I, I think, um, yeah, I, I think we, we do consciously try and avoid the, the she thing or the he thing. Yeah. And we do a sort of a, 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 bit, a bit more of a generic thing, I suppose. We've occasionally done it. Yeah. Not often. No, we had a song called She's My Missus that was written about when I was getting married. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we don't do it so, often. So talking about the sexuality, so you're bisexual. Yeah. Did, when did you come out to your family or did they just always know? I think dad suspected before he died. Right. And then mum, I told mum. Um, in 91. In 91. And I remember, this that sounds really stupid, but I remember... Um, walking into the local news shop down the news agents down in the West Country. And they, the sun was all fanned out on the thing. And I was on the front page it just said, and the headline was, I'm by sexy too. That was the headline. And I just for a moment thought, if I buy all these newspapers, nobody will ever know. My <laughs> 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 secret, you know. Um, I knew, I knew. Yeah, you, Fred, Fred, years before. Because I met Stuart in 82. Yeah. And, you, 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 you knew, but did you, before you were told, did you know? Did you have this kind of innate feeling of? I, I did a little bit because I remember okay. we, were tra- we were going to a club in, I remember this really well, we were both in this car, we are going to a club and we just said, oh, I'm not going to go to that club tonight, I'm going to go to the, I'm, I'll meet this guy in this bar. And I remember just thinking, all right. Yeah. Because I kind of knew, but I didn't really, didn't, I never gave it much thought really. No. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've always don't really care. Yeah. I had a girlfriend um, uh, a few years ago and we, we clicked really, really well. I mean, we, we definitely did. I, um, it's, I, and I, in fact, I think I clicked better with her in a weird way than I did with Stuart, although I was with Stuart for much longer. But with her, there, I, never, I never had that um, sense of closeness. I can't, ex- I can't really explain that. But with, I clicked with her, definitely. We could, we could walk in silence for hours and hours and hours and not feel the need to talk. But for some inexplicable reason, there was a thing missing. I couldn't quite explain it. Um, and so I, I, I was with Stuart for, um, yeah, for 28 years. And, you know, it's, um, he knew he was gay when he was 12. I didn't really, really absorb the possibility until I was in my late 20s, early 30s. Gosh, okay. Yeah. That's incredible. That's incredible. Um, you, you've, you've had quite a long career now. It's, it's really hmm. impressive how long you've been on the block and that you're, you're, still, um, that you're still going and still happy and still smiling which is nice and not taking yourself too seriously because that's, that's a really important thing. Do you have any tips and tricks for somebody who wants to start out in the business? Uh, yeah. Looking back where you are now going, well, do you know what, if you're, if you're starting out today, this is what I would do. If I was starting out today, what I would, I would, if someone asked me about t- in today's market, hold on to your copyrights as long as you can. Yeah. Because that copyright it, uh, historically Bands would always give them give them away with the minute you sign a record deal, and for and in, in perpetuity, uh, yeah. that's something you need to you need to seriously fight for. Um, never pay anybody a retainer until they've proved until either until they've proved themselves or just never. That is really personal. Yeah, experience. That, that, is, that is real. That's <laughs> we, we having have, done that, we've got some golden rules which occasionally we've broken, and every time we've broken, we've we've regretted it. Yeah, and I think um, work with friends if you can. Yeah, just just try and trust. Yeah. If, if people if people like what you do, they will step up and help you out. They, yeah. they just will. They 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 won't. Um, they, what's what I'm looking for? They, they, it, 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 you shouldn't have to continually um, badger them. You know, like with a label or anything like. For example, you know, if it, I also I would say don't go to record labels. Just work your own momentum. Get your own songs. Hang on to your copyright. And if a deal comes along and it's worth considering, then obviously consider it. But the, the more valuable you make yourself and your content, the better deal you're going to get. Yeah, exa- exactly, exactly. Great, great advice. Um, I'm too sexy. Yes. Is it bittersweet? <laughs> 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 is, is it boom? Yes. Is it is it bittersweet? Because it's it's 
obviously they're the biggest hit of your your lives and you're yeah. unlikely to get a, a hit ever which is as big as that no, um yeah. yeah um you know i i quite often hear elton john talking about your song which was his you know predominant big hit to start with and he's saying i'm so bored of playing the damn thing and and candle in the wind but i'll do it because the fans want to but one day i will stop doing it because i don't want to do it for the 14,000th time I, okay. do you feel the same way about I'm too sexy. Is it like, you know, for God's sake, we've done other stuff as well, or no? No, I don't, I don't think Elton John should have said that. No, per personally, if I went to see Elton John, no, if, he, if, if he didn't play your song, I would hunt him down like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> because that is a great song. And, if, and yeah. if I had paid to see him play, I'd want to hear your song. And yeah. I think, I mean, it's just a personal thing, every artist is different. I think there's a contract between you and the audience. Um, you have to understand that people, you know, if I went to see Depeche Mode and they didn't play Enjoy the Silence, I'd be pissed. Yeah. I'd be pissed off about that. And, yeah. um, and, you know, and so on and so on with lots awesome. of bands. So I think you get, well, I mean, what we do is we play a big hit and then we'll play. We, it's a trade-off. It's, it's hit, lesser known song, hit, lesser known song. And we, yeah. that's how we do it. Also, the songs, yeah. one, one, uh, a friend of ours once said to us, once the song's a hit, it no longer just belongs to you. And oh, that's, that's a really good um, And that's thought. exactly yeah. true. And so when Alton John says that, he's being really, really silly. Because yeah. your song believes, belongs as much to him as it does to all those other people that bought it and love it. Yeah. So he, yeah. Should, he should button it and enjoy it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so you've got a new song coming out on March the 12th, which is Your, your Inner Light is Love. Um, yes. And, you know, I, I've seen you on the press talking about COVID and the, the lockdown situation. And we've also already spoken about um, exercise during lockdown and yeah. and um, and I think some of your um, comments have probably been um, misunderstood slightly. Um, yeah, just misquoted actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so can you just tell us a little bit about that single, why you wrote it, what it's out there for and what you're hoping to achieve with it? Okay, um, the last single was We're All Criminals, which was quite a cynical look at um, at life currently and we want to just to exercise that particular thought so you're in the light is love is a much more positive song we want we we wanted to uh, and also the doom and gloom is just doing my brain in so we wanted <laughs> to write we wanted to write a sing-along something meaningful something meaningful it's it's about the inner light which is we can all the best we can do is is be as bright and as positive and as warm to each other as we can, that if every and if everybody did that, it would be a pretty amazing thing. Um, so the inner light is love is just that. It's 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 a song of unity and coming together, yeah. and not letting governments get in the way, not letting vaccines get in the way, or your opinion on Brexit, or your, your, whether you're a Man United fan or an Arsenal fan. All that, <laughs> all this, all this stuff is just divide. Divides. It's just it's just ridiculous. So the idea is that there is all you know, cut away right down to the core of it. We are much more similar than we care to admit. Um, and um, that's the idea of the song, just coming, um, a song about coming together. And yeah, the, the video is out kind of prior to the single release, yes, yes. and we wanted that to be really bright and breezy as well. So, so that, that primary colours. Lots of primary colours and, uh, and fun, you know. I, I can't imagine going on stage, although we have done this, where you leave the stage with the, and people, you leave them more miserable than they were when they came in. <laughs> <laughs> that's, how, that's how we started. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but now I I like to see people happy. I like to see yeah. which is one of the things. One of the reasons I don't care for masks because I cannot see their face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I cannot see whether they're smiling at me or just scowling. I, that's yeah, they're scowling. Scowling. they're scowling. Okay, yeah, mostly. Um, <laughs> that's what I, that's what it I is know. horrible. It's, yeah, it is. I, I'm, I'm, I feel I'm being robbed mm. of them. Yeah, yeah. That's what what, do, do you know what? When, when this when this whole thing started i created a charity called get musicians working because as a conductor i you know i work with thousands of musicians a year and so many people were writing to me saying i've got no work i need to pay the bills have you got any work that you can give to me rob and i you know i know i didn't so i set up this charity and i've, I've done so much press and pr and, and radio interviews and oh, television okay. interviews about it and one of the things i realized after speaking with 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 somebody and i was saying well you know music th this whole charity get musicians working it's not the most important charity in the world you know things like cancer charities that you can't put them they're not on the same level and she yeah. stopped me and she said hold on rob she said music for me is emotional medicine without yeah. that i definitely think i would not be here today because i couldn't be by myself shielding alone in my flat 
for the past 12 months if I didn't have the music. That's and so I'm, I, you know, that's the, 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 and that idea of emotional medicine really um, yes. opened my eyes to yes. actually what, as musicians, what we can achieve and, and do for people. So I love that you've created such a positive, happy um, single. I'm, I mean, yes. it's brilliant. Thank you for doing that. I mean, it's, it's a pleasure. Yes. I, I, I've got a much cheaper bike than your Peloton. I've got a much cheaper exercise bike here. Um, but uh, what, what you're saying is true. With, it's interesting. If I'm watching the news, I pedal quite slowly. Yeah. But music yeah. really drives you forward. It really yeah. does. And yes, there's yes. a song by Aerosmith called Pink, which off Nine Lives yeah, no. it just makes me smile. I just, it's so, it's just fun, you know. And Steve Tyler is just so great. Steve is Tyler. great sense of humour. So uh, yeah, and I agree with you. I, I absolutely musical medicine. It's absolutely true. Yeah. yeah. Um, just to finish off, because I know we push for time. I, I've got some quick fire questions. I don't okay. care who answers them, but here okay. we go. So, one person you've never worked with that you always wanted to. Dead or alive. Either. Either. Calvin Harris. Mine would be Leonard Cohen. Okay. Good. Oh, well. um, if you weren't a musician, what would you be? Politician. Um, <laughs> probably, really. Really? Probably, yeah, yeah. yeah, Richard would do yeah. it. Bars and nightclubs, probably. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, if, you could have, if you could have one thing in the world right now, what would it be? Um, I'd like my wife here. Okay. Yeah, Where is she? She's in, she's in Barcelona. Yeah. Oh, We're, right. How long have you been separated? This time only about uh, the moment, just three weeks. But our, our longest separation was four months, um, and it's uh, it, it's uh, yeah. When my depression kicked, you know that got on go on about that. But she's very good with it. So uh, yeah, I would yeah. say my wife. Yeah. Um, and me, it would probably be I'd like to fall in love again. That oh, would be nice. I like that. Okay. Um, the proudest moment of your career so far. What is it? Ooh. Sitting in an open top hire car in. Um, Miami, to go through the radio stations, and we've it was Sunday afternoon, and we found the chart station, and it said this this America's number one this week is right. So Fred, I'm too sexy. So that wow. was career wise. That's my proudest moment. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. for me when we went back to Germany with your my mate, because we okay. we had a big gap, and then we had another big hit in Germany in Europe, and I suddenly thought, you know, it, it helped to stifle all the all the all the people who said, you know, that well that's been gone yeah. bye bye kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I've got great satisfaction over that. Okay, fantastic. And the worst moment of your career so far? Oh, wait, that's easy. Worst moment of career so far? Uh, well, mine was I had a pair of trousers made out of bubble wrap. <laughs> <laughs> and we were doing a gig. <laughs> we were doing a gig in Cleveland in yeah. America, and uh, they split. Okay. Um, yes. <laughs> Pop. It's not <laughs> something you, would, you wouldn't want to have been at that gig. No. <laughs> Um, but we, we, we uh, broke a golden rule. We, we worked with someone we pledged never to work with again. And we ignored that advice. And, and we were told this person had changed and they hadn't. Yeah. So that was a big mistake. Was a big okay. Mistake. Lesson learned. Um, a piece of music you wish you'd have written? Oh, easy. Um, you never close your eyes anymore. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, oh, uh, you lost, you've lost that loving feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Great record. Yeah, and I'd yeah. like to have, uh, I'd like to have written, or I'd like us to have written Hurt. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And and do you both have a hero? Uh, I, I think our father, really, yeah, for me. Yeah, probably dad. Okay. Mm, I, I would right. think, yeah. He was, a, he was a good father and good guy. Second World War and, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. So last three questions. Uh, number one, what's your most treasured possession? Oh, that's a good question. Um, treasure possession, probably one of my guitars. I'd have to go for 1964 Strat Custom. Okay. And mine is my, my watch. Okay, and what is your watch? It's a Rolex. Oh, lovely. Okay, fine. Um, the most outrageous thing you've ever purchased? Oh. Um, I spent two and a half thousand quid on a pair of leather trousers. <laughs> yeah, we both, we both did that. Hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't, don't ask me why. Because um, the only thing I'd have to say about them, they lasted about 18 years. Yes. So oh, wow. Well, that's value for money then. It, it, it is, yeah. And, and, I, and I wore them at a lot of shows. Yeah. Um, I suppose that was quite outrageous. And anything else? Um, yes, one thing. When I bought my first house, it's the first house I ever oh, the owned. fridge. <laughs> I, 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 I love, I love uh, kitchen appliances. I think they're fantastic. So I 
<laughs> went up to Peter Jones and I said, show me your biggest, most fantastic fridge, which they did. And I said, can you deliver it? Yes, they did. It arrived at my house. It wouldn't go through the door, wouldn't go through <laughs> the window. Know. It was huge. It was, in, I mean, like an industrial yeah, fridge. Yeah, yeah. And so it sat outside my house for about three months, just in, in the wrapper. <laughs> And I had no idea what to do with that. They wouldn't take it back, obviously, because it had been sitting outside of me. Yeah. And um, a local restaurant opened up, and he said, I've seen that outside your house. Do you want to flog it? I got rid of it for 200 quid. It cost me about seven or eight grand. It's like, oh, my oh, word. Man, <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> I mean, just, you know, I, just, I was so excited about the house. I didn't think to, to measure, measure things it. up. No, 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 exactly. no. We More did that with a bed, but it's, it's, uh, we just took out the window. Um, to get the bed okay. in. <laughs> yes, exactly. um, yeah. and, and lastly, the one thing that you can't live without. Uh, I think I think music. Actually. Music, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I think I'd go mad if I couldn't listen to music. Yeah, or we'll play it. Or we'll play it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, look, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate you. You're superstars and you're lovely people as well, which is even more important. So I really appreciate that. Um, actually, I lied. There is one more thing. Um, okay. When are you going to do a, a record with an orchestra? Well, it's for, I was going to beat you to it. We were meant to do one last year. Yeah, with the with the Berlin uh, Philharmonic or the Berlin Philharmonic. We were due to do a gig last year because of COVID. It got cancelled, and we were meant to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We but, would love to if you, but, if you but, would be up for but, it. But please invite us. That'd be lovely. Yes. Well, we should have another conversation then. We should. Absolutely. I've, I've got lots of ideas. Let's do okay. that. All right, wicked. All right, that'd let's be great. do that. All right. Yeah. Well, gents, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, and good luck with the, the single. I'm sure everybody's going to love it. It's a ray Thank of sunshine. You. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Thanks Thank you. Us. Cheers. All the best. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 The Backstage Blog.